Now back to talking about matter, we would want to uh, come up with a system that we could classify matter. Uh, one of the first parts, or the first part that we can classify matter is of course in its physical state. Uh, the second one we can discuss, we'll discuss in a second, would be composition. Now we all know that matter can consist in three states, the solid phase, liquid phase, and gas phase. Uh, pictured here, uh, you can see that solid material has a defined volume and a defined shape. Uh, liquid material has a defined volume but doesn't have a defined shape. It takes up the shape of its container. Uh, gas doesn't have a defined volume or shape. It takes up the volume and shape of the entire container it's contained in. Now, of course, we're going to want to talk about changes from the states, solid to liquid to gas, and anywhere in between. Um, we'll also want to talk about the energy that it takes to undergo these transitions. An uh, additional um, thing we want to discuss or think about when we're looking at matter in different states uh, is, of course, at the microscopic level. When you think about a solid, you can think about those you know, uh, general definitions about you know, volume and shape. But if we think about what a solid material is um, at the microscopic level, we're going to think about it that whether it be a compound or an atom, uh, the atoms, if it is an atom, uh, in a solid phase have very, um, have very little room to move around. Of course, if they um, have any temperature, they have kinetic energy, but they are very restricted in some pattern. Um, a molecule or atom that's in the solid phase does have vibrational energies. It might be shaking around, but it's never going to move very far from its fixed position. This atom is never going to go around that atom in the solid phase. Uh, very defined fixed positions. Um, just a little bit of vibrational energy. Now, atoms or molecules in the liquid phase have a little bit more kinetic energy and a little bit um, say more movement or freedom to move around degrees of freedom so a say a water molecule or some atom in the liquid phase um, down here uh, at the bottom of the container uh, can at some other second travel to the top of this uh, container um, because it can uh, move around its nearest neighboring atoms uh, it's never going to move very far past uh, its uh, neighboring atoms or molecules, but it does have a little bit more freedom to do so. Now, atoms or molecules in the gas phase have a lot of freedom to move around and actually very rarely come into contact with each other, and that's why sort of they take up so much um, more room in the gas phase. Uh, so that idea of movement, freedom, uh, and kinetic energy is something that we're going to discuss a little bit more in depth as we talk about the states of matter. The second classification scheme that we could use for matter is of course composition. Now we can uh, discuss how we classify matter through composition by just a series of very simple questions. Uh, if you start out with a sample, uh, you're going to ask if it has a variable composition. Are there more than one things uh, involved in this sample? If the answer is yes, what you have is a mixture, of course, uh, two or more components to this sample. Now, the second question you can ask, if once you've figured out that you have a mixture, is the mixture uniform throughout? Meaning that if you look at the sample at various points, do you see the same thing? Uh, if the answer to that question is yes, what you have is a homogeneous mixture. Okay, a uh, homogeneous mixture can be um, uh, viewed through the example of tea with sugar. Now if you take a look at any point in this uh, cup of tea, if, if, if it's been mixed properly, uh, you're going to be seeing a uh, uniform distribution of water molecules, uh, sugar molecules, um, any of the molecules that came out of the tea leaves into the um, water solution. Um, and this can be experienced in the macroscopic cell that if you have a cup of tea that's been mixed uh, appropriately, every sip will taste the same because you're getting the same amount of water, tea, sugar. On the other hand, if you ask if the sample is uniform throughout and you say no, what you have is a heterogeneous mixture. 
heterogeneous mixture uh, can be viewed as sort of wet sand. Depending on where you look or how far you dig on this sample um, of wet sand, you're going to see a different proportion of water molecules, uh, sand particles, or maybe a mixture of the two. Uh, depending on where you look, you get a different composition of components of this mixture and therefore it's not uniform throughout a heterogeneous mixture. Now let's go back up to the beginning and look at a different sample that you asked the question is it a variable composition and you say no. If that is the answer what you have is a pure substance. Now this sample, a pure substance, um, doesn't have more than one component. So the next question you're going to ask is can we separate this one component into simpler substances? If the answer is no, what you have is an element, which we're, of course we're going to find on the periodic table of the elements. Um, in terms of chemistry, this is our building block. Uh, we can't break this uh, piece of matter down any further. Um, one example of a pure element would be a helium uh, sample, such as in this Goodyear blimp. Uh, a gold uh, piece of jewelry, if it's pure gold, um, that would be an example of just an element, gold. Uh, if you can break down the pure substance further, what you have is a compound. And a good example of that is, of course, water. Everyone knows that water is H2O, so we could, in uh, through different chemical reactions, break this up into its con uh, uh, constituent elements, hydrogen and oxygen. Therefore, it is a compound. Now, since we're talking about matter uh, in a chemistry course, we're, of course, going to be using symbols and formulas quite a bit. Uh, we're going to talk about this in great detail in an upcoming uh, unit, but we should uh, just briefly uh, discuss chemical symbols and formulas, uh, just so that while you see them in this unit, um, it's uh, nothing surprising. So, of course, we, if we have an element, uh, each element has its name, such as hydrogen or oxygen. Now, each element has a one or two letter abbreviation, the elemental symbol. H for um, hydrogen, O for oxygen, or some even have two letters like helium in our previous example. Okay, those are of course our elemental or chemical symbols for the elements. Now of course you can com combine uh, hydrogen and oxygen in two hydrogen molecules per one oxygen molecule and that of course makes the water molecule and of course we're going to show that with a formula of H2O. Uh, you indicate the number of hydrogen atoms as a subscript 2 uh, anytime you just have one atom, such as oxygen, sort of leave out the one subscript. But we're certainly going to see these formulas and these symbols quite a bit as the semester progresses.